Hello and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekend the Show. I'm Mal Lee, your host of the season, if you don't already know. That is, um, welcome to the empty studio. I've been out and about today. Horrible weather, absolutely horrible. Compared to yesterday at the North Liverpool GFL, it was nice weather. Lost my car keys, but I found my car keys. Thank you very much to all the staff. Thank you very much to the person who passed in my car keys, by the way. Um, and well done to all the referees and all the teams and all the parents there yesterday. Um, Talked my way to them, quite a few of them. Obviously, not just about respect, I think everyone knows what we're doing. Um, still one or two today called me. Hello, mate. Hello, ref. How are you? Well, there you go. I'm not. I just support all the referees with the respect on and off the field of play, please, to make sure that those referees are sort of encouraged along with the kids as well within the game because the referees have got a hard job and no more so than what's happening with the non-heading of the ball from 7s, 8s and 9s and 10s, 11s, 12s I think is going to be um, phased out for heading the ball next year. Um, now I watched over the last couple of days, obviously it didn't get as many games in yesterday because as I say my eyes were looking down all the time looking for the car keys so unfortunately I missed a little bit that went on um, and today I saw a lot more and I've been noticing the way the kids are playing this game and the referees as I say it's, it's hard for the referees because they have to control the indirect free kicks and direct free kicks and was talking to one or two who watched the show and said they were still confused as well over these um, <laughs> no throw-ins, no heading of the ball, what the kids are going to do. Now what I have noticed with all the kids, um, yeah you could just say it's because they're all getting used to these, we really really don't know why this has been phased out, I really really don't. Talking to managers, coaches, even the kids, they hate it, even the referees uh, are not liking it one little bit. So this is just on, on, on certain leagues that I'm talking to, you know. People are just not grisp, grasping it and liking it because they, they're taking a lot out of the football game. They really are, you know, because no throw-ins, it's got to be a solid ball, it's got to be still not in motion on the sideline whenever the ball went out of play. And then the kids can take two passes, dribble it in and shoot if they require the near enough to shoot. Now watching all the kids over the last couple of days, I must admit, kids are just blasting it in, keeping it low and blasting as a pass. No one is running with that ball at the moment. Um, whether they believe that the kids want to do that, and you've got to be five yards back, you know, and they just don't want to take anyone on. They just want to shoot and get it as close to the goal as they possibly can. And I did see half a dozen headers um, where they were penalised by the referee, indirect free kicks were given. And what I saw of those headers, the kids are doing it. They're not coming at them full blast. They're bouncing and they're petrified because there's an attack of which we did say this, running in, that they are heading it to give away that indirect free kick. It's, um, it's not really stopping the heading in the game. It's just introducing a, a, another point of grassroots football. It really is. Um, and you feel sorry for the kids because they don't want to give a goal away either. So they're putting their heads to it to give that free kick away. And they're holding their heads as if, oh, I've headed the ball. And it, it's disheartening really because where they are, the ball's coming to them, and it's it's literally, you know, a feather touch when they're doing that. There's no force in it, no power. They're just controlling it and then chesting it down, but obviously it's an indirect free kick. And that's what I've noticed throughout a couple of days watching the kids and their actions um, playing the game. Now, whether many are out there monitoring it, I'm not too sure. But uh, you're talking to the coaches and the managers after it and just saying they're hating it. And you could say, wow, it's only two games in, but already they're hating it. No one's liking it. No one's liking the way the game is played at the moment. <clears throat> that's 7s, 8s, 
and nines. As I say, it'd be phased out tens and elevens. I was watching the higher uh, games, the tens and elevens, and there's quite a few headers in them games um, and controls headers, shall we say. So um, I'd love your thoughts on this. What are you find, even for you referees, uh, because plenty of you were coming up to me today, still asking the question and still not liking the new laws of the game, uh, non-existence of headers and you can look at the balls, how light they are and all that now and uh, we still had this conversation about America, still looking at the 3G pitches, still looking at the rubber can, rubber parts of it, you know, um, that go on the 3G pitches and 4G and they're still insisting that they want to ban them because they believe it causes cancer. Now it's not proven, the same as dementia is not proven with the youngsters, but we banned the heading of the ball. Why aren't we banning the 3G pitches? Why aren't we going back to grass, regardless of postponements and abandonments with the, due to the weather? I'll tell you why, because it's the money. There's too much money involved in it. That is why we are not banning the 3G and 4G pitches. And it's easy to say, well, it's not proven. It's exactly the same. It's not proven on grassroots football, the kids heading. So why are we taking the decision to ban heading of the ball? And why, even though it's not proven about cancer, on the, on the rubber parts, on a 3G pitch, we're not stopping that because there's no proof on either. But as I say, it's a 3G, 4G if you want to, it's the money. Imagine if we locked all them down now, just how much loss there would be to your county FAs, to your, your council, um, to Leisure United, I think, who own all these pitches. Devastating, wouldn't it? It'd be devastating. So, yeah, anyone who's got these 3G pitches, they'd all have to close down. And that goes to a lot of county FAs because they have the 3G pitches on their premises as well. So, this is my point of view. Where do we draw the line? It's inside up to yourselves, folks. Malatontextaline.com, have me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or the social network sites. I love your feedback. I do love grass football itself. Uh, today the pitches were rather wet um, because of the rain non-stop, and it was cold as well, and you feel the bike getting in there. Thankfully, I'm away next week um, off to Cyprus, um, but I'm dreading coming back already. I haven't even gone because I know what to expect when I come back, you know, and I'll be out and about at uh, in grassroots football, back in work, and it's all that which we all don't look forward to. I only have to be there one day, and I start thinking about coming back already, and it's horrible, the thoughts, well, oh, no good, I'd love to win this lottery, be that millionaire who can say, do you know what, I'm going to stay here a couple of months, and then I'll go back a year if you want. But, yeah, that's holidays for you, none of us want to come back, Everyone wants to stay away as long as you can, but you start counting the days. I start counting the days as soon as I've been there. Oh my God, it's, it, it's mad. You know, and it, when, especially when you've got a couple of days left to go, you give up. It's, it's all give up when you start thinking, I do not want to travel. I hate travelling, mate. I'm probably the worst traveller. I'll moan about everything. I just can't stand the travel. I just like to go, bang, like Doctor Who. There you go, jump in that kiosk, whatever it may be phone booth and then transport to your holiday destination you're in there in seconds that's what I want that's what I'd like it's just not going to happen um, I just hate the traveling not that I'm scared of the planes and that it's just because I've jumped out of a plane at 15,000 feet and I'm, I'm definitely that was good that was good travel it didn't take me that long to get back down why can't I take that long you know that quickness I make these planes faster so we're there faster if you want and then you've got the coach travel and then you, oh, you're shattered when you get in there and especially Cyprus two hours ahead I can't get a grip of that I need to go back to that two hours and just catch up on it but you never do and then when you come back you, you're jet lagged I'm still jet lagged after June's holiday anyway I know everyone's been going oh, I'd rather swap with you now Mal, and take that travel it's only five six hours away and you're there but that five six hours seven hours is a long, long time, believe me. Well, you'll know about it if you've been to Cyprus. Protaris it is, Victory Bay, lovely beach, 
lovely hotels, lovely people, um, and you know, and that's it is so relaxing. But me, I'm terrible because I'll be working right the way through it. That's me. That's me. Okay, you're working in the sun, not from home in the sun. There you go. Okay, respect, brilliant, well done to everyone there today. I did hear one line, obviously questioning the referee on most of the decisions. Didn't you see that? You know, the referee handled it great, don't get me wrong. A uh, very experienced referee. So you can stand back and just leave them to it. The youngsters that you worry about who, you know, if any if anyone gets any hassle, then I march right onto them and talk to them and say, stop questioning the referee, leave the referee because they're developing themselves and it's work in progress, basically. So, yeah, overall, over the last two two leagues, not, not really a problem, unless I've missed something. I may have missed one yesterday when I was looking for my car keys. Um, unfortunately, I apologise for that. But I'd like to, again, once again, to thank um, all the parents, everyone who are taking off the leaflets and all signing and even all players used to play for me as well, they're straight away, yeah, that, I love that, I'll sign a petition. And that's what we want to do, we want 100,000 signatures and we ask everyone if you could sign it. We're trying to bring and make improvements into grassroots football by saving you money in your pockets. That's what we're trying to do and we're trying to, you know, make it compatible with other countries, looking at all, and even the Premier League, if we can, we're um, asking Premier League clubs if they can get involved. And I know all their fans, they wouldn't be bothered if the percentage that goes to the Premier League would come back down to grassroots football. I, I'd love to see grass pitches built, not just 3G, grass pitches built with great, great facilities around it, which they've got, they've got the money there, you know, and the drainage systems to be spot on, and then give some free football out to teams. It'd be surely fully booted, and I'm not talking about just the kids as well. There's a lot of money going into amateur soccer, and they would look after it, I know they would, if you turn out and said, you know, if I'm, I'm sure adults would make a donation to the kids, and what have you, because I'd like to see kids now being able to go to teams, would have money in their pockets, a lot more savings, more money for the parents to fork out if they were going away on a trip, and they wouldn't mind it because we brought the cost down and their kids can go away and enjoy a little bit of a tournament abroad or something. And that's the way it should be, that's what I want to see, you know, we've got to pay. We do know things you do have to pay for, but not, not honestly, not when you're going on 3G pitches, a quarter of a pitch for five sides, and it could only be five kids. Quarter of a pitch for one hour, £51. Absolute scandalous, it really is. <clears throat> and no doubt, because the energy bills will all be going up, the electricity, the costs, no doubt there'll be another price increase midway through the season because everyone is trapped. They're all playing there now. They haven't got time to think about it. You mark my words, watch it go up yet again. And it'll probably go up with a couple of quid, um, to 53, 55 pound, whatever it is, for one hour. Now we know people are paying it. We know we're forced to pay. And someone turned around and said, there's a lot of parents out there. Kids have got brand new trainees on every day, brand new boots, brand new kits. Some parents we do know are okay. They work for their money. They work and they're doing okay. But not all of those parents are okay. And not all of those kids are okay. And they're the ones that we're trying to do it for. And honestly, if we had control, we'd balance it right out. We really would, knowing what teams deserve it, what clubs deserve it, what clubs can, f you know, field teams on their own with no problems. And those clubs, honest coaches and managers and committee members, would turn around and say, look, we're okay. We're okay. We're doing very, very well indeed. So please give it to the more disadvantaged players and parents than ourselves. And that's what happens and that's what we want to try and do within grassroots football. So thank you once again to all the parents this weekend who have signed the petition and are sharing it as well. More and more, we start off from one. It is a slow process. We start off from one and then we reach eventually 100,000. It's got to start somewhere and then somewhere. So we are promoting it, we are pushing it and we're making a difference. And we can put videos on, then I will. And I want to involve 
everyone who agrees with me and I don't think there's many people out there that disagree with me. I know the people who won't sign it are the people who haven't got a problem, even that goes from clubs, coaches, managers as well. But everyone who thinks of someone else, they know, they've met them, I have uh, personally and I know the MPs, know there's a lot of disadvantaged children and parents out there who need our support and that's what we're trying to do. Not just here, not just locally, this is nationwide. Don't cross the line, it's nationwide, so we want to help everyone out right across the country and we'd love it if the government turned around and looked at us and said, you know what, what an independent organisation. We are independent and we do want to look after grassroots football and we're a community interest company at CIC, which means everything that we do goes right back into what we're doing, so it's grassroots. And we're giving our kids, as you know yourself, on a Friday night, we're giving them a voice. Um, and we want to try and make sure that kids in the community have got a voice and something to look forward to. We want to give, give the confidence back to the children as well. And that goes for football. You know, just walk around, just talk to parents. And when I was doing these leaflets, people were pulling me to one side and totally agree with me and can't thank me enough for trying to help them. They don't publicise it, but when you come up with something like this, then they tell you all about it. It really is, you know. It, and that's what I like. I want to be everyone's friend in grassroots football. Managers, referees, kids, parents, mums, dads, aunties, uncles, brothers, sisters. Everyone who's involved in that committee game. Everyone who's involved in the football game. Work together, let's get a plan, let's revamp it. Let's, let's do something about it and make it worthwhile for everyone. Organisations team up rather than going individually. You know, we're trying to do our best to make a difference, not just for referees, for the team, for the kids, for the parents, for the players, for everyone, and even the referees. You know, grassroots football should be like that. Because as we talk about, only a very small percentage of kids will make the big time. And that's proven, that's a fact. The Premier League know it, the clubs know it, your, your football clubs, your professional football clubs know it. Even managers and coaches and grassroots clubs know who's going to make it or who's going to have a little chance about making it. I talk to scouts every day, day in, day out. We know and you can see what kid has a chance of making it. What child? And it's very few and far between, believe me. So the majority of those kids are out there developing the skills but also having fun, because we all know deep down that the majority of them will not make it to the big time. And look how many foreigners all the Premier League are bringing into this country to play in our teams. So what chance do the local kids get of making a big time? So that gives your percentage a little bit lower because clubs just seem to want a lot of players from abroad. And just look who's local, how many local players does clubs have? How many local players in the professional teams? Maybe some in the academies, but they don't come through to the big time, do they? So I'm only asking you to think, I'm asking you to support us, I'm asking you to make a difference with us and support the work that we do. This will be my last show, unless I can get in during the week and do the Friday, Saturday, Sunday and just miss one week. Um, that's all I need to do, if I can. If I've got the time, I will do. Um, but I really appreciate everyone who tunes into us, everyone who listens to us, everyone who thinks that we're okay, and everyone who's going to be coming in on the show over the next few weeks after I come back. And there is a lot of people lined up, I assure you. We all want to make a difference in grassroots football. We want to make it better for the kids, make it better for the referees, and make it better for the parents, managers and coaches, especially with their courses as well. Let's get them free, the volunteers, Let's make the courses free if we can. We want to say we want your support and you can do that by signing our petition. Thank you so much for tuning in to this weekend's show. You know, we have a great day. From me, so I've got to mention Liverpool and Everton. That's it. I've mentioned them and that's all I'm going to be talking about um, until three weeks' time when I come back and see how Liverpool and Everton do fair in their games over the next couple of weeks. In the meantime... From myself, Marlene, all the team here, the grassroots show, don't cross the line, respect programme, no ref, no game, heart of gold initiatives, which we're going to be doing a great North Run, I assure you, you can support me on that one as well. In the meantime, we'll be back, possibly, 
on this Friday. If not, there'll be a farewell message and just to let you know when I'll be back from holiday in Cyprus. Good night, God bless.